Hello everybody, and it's Sunday, and I've been watching Star City Games coverage of the Columbus Open all weekend, seeing how that's going, and uh, decided to get in a stream here at the end. I've been sick, my voice is weird, I've, I'm weird, I might just do ridiculous things, you should all know that. So, uh, let's see... Taken some feedback recently, and while I like to be super competitive and play uh, decks that I think give me a good chance to win all the time, the eh, people, you know, like a little spice in the variety. And uh, there was some feedback that they wanted me to play some decks that, you know, maybe aren't so uh, tier one spiky and just try some crazy things. But well, the weird thing is I try crazy things all the time. I I try it on iOS all the time, like while we're watching whatever new show the CW has put out because my wife seems to love those shows. And so I I'm always trying a lot of different decks. I try decks that I read about on the forums and I try uh, just my own brews, and I, I pretty much try everything. And the thing is, iOS is pretty competitive because the only players left are pretty good. Uh, that or the matchmaking's better, one of the two. But it's it's pretty tough to get wins on iOS if you're not playing a really good build of whatever you're playing. And uh, when I just get myself kicked around. Uh, trying to use those decks on iOS, I decide they're not very good and I don't play them on Xbox. The thing is, it's probably easier to get wins on Xbox. I, I think most people would say that the matchmaking here just doesn't work, at least not as intended. And because of that, we can probably just go out and win some games with those decks that I write off because they don't perform on iOS at all. So I'm going to try to invert the the story. I'm going to try to only play my competitive decks on iOS because I know I get frustrated when I lose and I know it's pretty good competition there and I've just been playing a bunch of bad decks and that makes me frustrated. So I'm going to try to flip the coin. I'm going to play the good decks on iOS. I'm going to play kind of the neato decks over here for hopefully your entertainment from time to time. And I'm still going to play, you know, the good decks but Every now and then we'll just have kind of a fun day. So here's here's our first fun day deck, uh, which actually, uh, this is a new brew from today, which I hope is all right. So we take uh, basically Thopters and we cut the blue, for, we cut the Whirler Rogues, and we add in the black. And what we get for black is Nantuko Husk, we get Lily, we get uh, Smother and Abomination, and we get Forerunner of Slaughter, which might be really fun uh, as another way to give haste. Because, man, Thopter Engineer giving artifact creatures haste is so good. But maybe Forerunner can kind of sneak us some extra artificial haste this way. We also have some removal in Bone Splinters to take out bigger threats, which is something that uh, red-blue Thopters couldn't really do. So let's... Uh, ah! No! I didn't customize. God knows. I've got to customize my deck. If I show up as Jason the Wasteland, it would just be so embarrassing. Oh, what am I doing? I'm filtering? No, I'm not. I'm deck customizing. Jeez, oh, Pete. So, yeah, still sick. I've been pretty much walking around under the influence of NyQuil for three days. Trying to shake it off. Still hasn't happened yet. For those of you who... Um, look for duels diaries on Sundays. I think I'm going to switch that to Monday that I'm going to do my writing and publishing. Monday's a terrible day for me to try to work anyways. And, you know, everybody's swamped. Nobody gets back to you. And the email factor is ridiculous. So instead, I think the time I would usually spend Monday responding to email from over the weekend, I'm just going to push that to Tuesday anyway because nobody actually... Uh, gets back to you or cares if you get back to them on Monday. And instead, I'm going to write Duel's Diaries on Monday afternoon. That's that's my new plan. Because uh, on Sundays, I actually have a lot of things coming up that are exciting on Sundays, including Road WrestleMania, WWE parties. Um, coverage is kind of kicking back into swing. So like watching the SCG Open and next weekend, I believe, watching the Pro Tour is going to be how I want to spend my Sunday. 
And I can't really balance that with writing. Writing, I have to kill the distractions. I have to shut the door. I have to turn up the music so I don't hear what else is going on in the house, or I have to put on headphones. And I have to, you know, dial in. Um... Maybe it's just dis- maybe it's disappointing or I don't know. Maybe it's I don't know what it is. Maybe it's surprising to some of you to hear that it's that hard for me, but it is. I'm not I'm not very natural at all. And those posts, you know, with research can take like 3 hours without research just straight up writing can take 2 hours, sometimes more, sometimes less. And like last Monday I lost my entire post. So <laughs> it took uh it took a uh, all day. It was about um it was a, it was about a five or six hour. I guess that's not all day, but it felt like it. I did. Right after I lost it, I had to take a walk and clear my head and calm down because I was angry. All right, there we go. Um, really need another swamp, but three lands, spells. That's usually a keep in my in my world. Could sure use a swamp off the top though. And what's the municipal world going to pick? Sounds very corporate. <laughs> One would say maybe I should have played Marsh, but the only thing that can punish me for that is if I want to turn a turn three Liliana and I draw the other uh, Smoldering Marsh in the deck. Everything else either comes into play untapped, like Swamp, and uh, Dragon Skull Summit, or there's Evolving Wilds, which wouldn't help me out anyway. Alright, so here we are back on Xbox. And I don't like it on iOS when people, I don't know, go to the bathroom or <laughs> just stop and go grab a bite to eat or whatever and leave you hanging, but I really don't get it on Xbox. It's like, come on, you were in front of your console a second ago. What are you doing now? And maybe you did run for that bite to eat or that trip to the bathroom. It's I think it's a more chronic problem on iOS because it can happen at any time. Or uh, people on iPhone losing signal, they just crash. You lose your game. Well, you lose your opponent. Usually you keep the game. All right, here. Let's get perilous. And uh, let's see here. I should probably open up the chat over here since uh, SCG Live coverage isn't coming back for a while. I'm actually not even looking at my chat, so I don't know. I don't know if y'all uh, are talking at me. Or if you're not, yeah, you got a forest from your fertile thicket. I can't believe how... Uh, whenever I see people cast that card, they hit. But I know from looking at land counts and decks that it's not that easy to hit off that thing. So it's really bizarre. Hey, guess what? My controller batteries are low. No shocker there. It is cold here. The batteries usually drain overnight. It is ridiculous. <laughs> we'll try to survive this game. Or maybe at a time when I tap out, I'll do the quick change. I've got some I've got some more batteries over here. And there's a creature. Do I care about that creature? I don't think so. I'll probably end up pitching these mirrors anyway. What I care about is whether or not Abomination gets to stick around and draw me cards. So, green, black. Uh, Reef Soul doesn't kill it. Bone Splinters does. And Bone Splinters would also be no joy. Now, if I just play the Husk right now... Then I'll be set up for next turn, so I think I'll go with that. If he has Bone Splinters, he'll use it on the Husk. I'll follow it with Abomination. Good times. Well, it's going to be hard to find a time without priority to switch these batteries now. I guess I can just do it on my turn. Make him wait. He made me wait. All right, what's it going to be? Wild Instincts. Guess what? I was ready. Uh, I think we definitely want to use the Impulse. No point in using a Mirror. Okay. So... Uh, good. I mean, I, Wild Instincts popped into my head, but I didn't actually think he'd have it. But I'm glad we held back. I'm glad we played it the way we did. Get that out there. 
this game's going to be an uphill climb, uh, even a languish. I'll still have Husk, and I'll refill, and he'll take four. I'll draw three cards. Yeah, he's out. He's had enough already. I'm going to change those batteries. Now nah, I'll finish this game and change those batteries. He shouldn't be long for this world. I've gotten into a bad habit lately, especially on iOS when I'm playing really good deck against really good deck. And it reminds me of back when I used to play test for big tournaments all the time. And um, it's like I just concede as soon as I can kind of, as soon as I fall behind an amount and I'm like, yeah, there's like no draws. And I just, I, I like scoop when I still have a lot of life. And that's not something I really like. Oh, plummet. Hello. That's uh, something. Let's go up here. Because I want to get the right cards in my hand for the trigger. I wonder why he conceded, though, when I blew up his wild instincts, if he has cards like Plummet. And we'll just sack with this on the stack so I get to draw that card. I guess I could have done it the other way around. I should have pointed the discard effect. I should have hit the discard effect first. I'm going to discard this because I can get it back. And then I would have had the most cards to choose from, like Evolving Wilds. Would have rather uh, discarded that one, since it can't get back Firebird. Okay. So how to spend this turn? I think we want to hit him with Forerunner. I think we want some haste. And some Evolving Wilds. Yeah. Forerunner is a good follow-up to a board wipe, and uh, one of the only, like, three-mana, three-power haste things. Maybe the only one you can do in this game, without thinking too hard. An untapped land would have been great there. I would have had a lot of good options, but we'll take what we can get. And let's see what happens now. Jagascar, does he have the elite to go wide and tall at the same time? Can he can he put it all together right here? Doesn't look like it. Does not look like it. Okay, so we've got we got this. Um that'll definitely do. So uh you get out there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean this is just for the rubs, but you gotta make sure. We could get fogged. Wouldn't be the first time. Fog, please? Remind me of that Xbox meta? Nope. For the first time in a long time in the rank 1 through 10s, I did not get fogged. It's probably unlucky. Curses. Uh, Nighthawk, uh, I talked about it in the intro, but it's worth talking about again. Because, you know, I only talk about it in the intro for the good of the YouTube land. But I've, I've received some feedback lately that I don't play enough fun decks. And I can appreciate that. I kind of see how that works. I play on iOS a lot. Uh, I actually play more than I do on Xbox One. And when I play on iOS, I'm always brewing and I'm trying new decks. But the iOS landscape is a lot more competitive, or the matchmaking is a lot better, one of the two. I play a lot of rank 40s, I play a lot of ramp, and I play a lot of red deck wins, and I play a lot of good players. So the new decks and, you know, decks that maybe I copy off the forum or whatever, they uh, usually do pretty bad. And if there's one thing you can know about me, it's I do not like doing bad. So those decks typically only get played for one or two games, and then they get deleted, uh, regardless of how cool people may have found them. So they never make it to Xbox. When I sit down here, I already know kind of the decks I want to play that are 
that you know prevent me from that bad feeling of losing but on Xbox, it's not as competitive, or at least the matchmaking is broken. So these decks that I'm always deleting could probably make really fun videos for Xbox and for the stream and for the YouTube channel. So I am trying to flip the coin. I'm going to try to play my new decks on Xbox and my proven decks on iOS. And so this is the first one. Um, I'm trying a Rakdos Thopters deck which kind of goes wide Thopter style and has the artifact synergies that uh, Thopters has, except it also has like the Nantuko Husk Aristocrats vibe going on. So, uh, so I mean, it's my first try at this, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I brewed it up this morning. I brewed about eight, eight decks this morning. So I actually make new and often bad decks all the time. They just don't survive playtesting <laughs> very often. It's so rare uh, that they survive, you know, the ramp and red meta on iOS, rank 40 iOS. They usually get deleted with extreme prejudice before they truly get a chance to know what life was really like. <laughs> and this guy's playing like the AI. Just get get all that tap land value. Let's get in there. So that's the long explanation. It's the repetitive explanation, but you know, they say you can't repeat yourself too often when you're in media. Online or otherwise. You kinda of send the same message a hundred times. That's not good. Well, that brick wall's the servitor. I guess I could have played Mirror instead, but I don't know. You haven't done anything. It's hard to hard to know. Um, It's tempting to get a Mirror down now, but I mean, if that thing gets renowned, all I have to do is pitch a Mirror at it. It's also tempting to get Engineer down now. I think we'll go with the Engineer. Artifact creatures with haste are cool. I've been, I uh, was watching SCG Live, and I think I watched Tom Ross play twice today with Black Red D Dragons, and he has Thopter Engineers, and it's kind of funny to see a card like Thopter Engineer getting spammed at people in Standard, and people saying, wow, I think we missed this card, and I'm like, what? We've been on this Thopter Engineer since July in duels, I don't know what you're talking about. It's like the best three drop in the game. <laughs> Maybe its only competition is Husk. I mean, what do we really have on three? I'm not giving it to Krasis. I'm just not doing it. <laughs> All right, he wants to come in. We'll give him that. He can have that. He's trying to be the aggro. I think we can kind of break him up pretty hard if he just tries to stay aggressive. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bounding Krasis. I saw that. Yeah, they were playing that in a teamer deck. Uh, who was playing that card? Well, a few people were playing that card. The green Mighty Morphin Power Ranger was playing that card. You'll have to watch if you want to know what I'm talking about there. And uh, what else? Okay, so there, I think there's more double black than double red in the deck. No, there's more double red. So I'm going to set up double red. But this could come back to bite me. But yeah, Bounding Krasis is getting played. Uh, that was in a Teamer Collected Company deck. It was in a blue... Uh, green flash deck at the SCG Open, and now we've got the uh, frickin' uh, Thopter Engineer at the top tables. Of First it was Grand Prix Oakland, and now it's it looks like Tom Ross is making the top eight, so it's going to be at the SCG Live, and people are like, I, I, I don't know about these cards. These cards surprise me. <laughs> like, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> Yeah, Evil Leap uh, made like one appearance on camera, but it's been a long time since that card really shined. But again, that was one that like some people played it at the Pro Tour, and they were like, Evolutionary Leap, <gasps> that's the new technology. I'm like, uh-uh, that card is broken. We know. Duels players know. And I bet Ross Miriam or Brian Von Duen or Brad Nelson or whoever uses it was playing Duels of the Planeswalkers and scouting our meta. <laughs> so... Good times. And of course, if you're just a new duels player, you don't have any idea what this stuff is that I'm talking about. Don't don't worry too much. It's just fun. It's I, I like to watch competitive magic, and I still try to play occasionally, but 
Generally, it doesn't work out like it used to in the old days. So, it's not a very threatening Kithion. So, I think I'll just... I mean, sending Thopter Engineer could force him to tap his mana, but if he has any kind of trick, I really don't want to lose it. So we'll just we'll just poke him in the poke him in the head, poke him in the eye. That's what we're doing. We're poking him in the eye for one. And next turn, I'm sure that we'll be able to set up some kind of trick around the Kithion if we want to. So we haven't drawn any of the like four mana spells, the Game Breakers, the Piacurans. Um, the Smothering Abomination, the Firebird. But that's okay, because we're just going wide, and there's a lot of pressure on our opponent to keep up. And it looks like they want to be Boros. It's going to be hard. Now, he wants to take out Husk. Do I want him to take out Husk? I'd have to sack two creatures. Um... I'm just going to let it go. I could be wrong. Based on what he has over there, I'm not worried. Okay, he does have the extra land. That's a pain, but it's okay. I wonder if I go in with, like, Servitor and such for the damage. Bone Splinters. Doesn't do the job right now. Let's let's try to get something off the top. Though I'd rather play this with one more land. Uh, it looks playable. It's a foundry. And we'll get this out there. And I think we'll just storm in. Let's see, because we get three damage, we lose Servitor, we both draw a card, he taps three mana. Three damage. You know what? No. We're just going to stay in the air. I don't think he has any sweepers. And I don't think I just want to give him favorable trades or the draw off the servitor right now. I want to make him catch up. Because if I force him to catch up, then Bone Splinter's mirror can blow him back out. It doesn't... It seems weird to not be attacking when he has one creature and I have four. But I just don't... I think it's a way to let him back in. He wants to go there. Yep. Now, I can force him to tap mana on his turn, and then he, he would have to have another land to do it next turn. It would take away his turn, but I think we'll just go up top, because next turn, if I don't draw anything really enticing, I'm just going to start going over the top with foundries. Okay. So he's low on action. He does have another brick wall, so I'm glad we didn't throw things at the um, Kithion. That's good. He can still make Kithion indestructible, though. So I think we're just going to go over the top. And just start squ swarming the castle. That's the plan. It looks a little conservative. And maybe it is too conservative, but let's see. If I had... In, if he had Indestructible and I was down a Ruin Servitor this turn, my attacks would be even worse than they would have been the turn before. And they're, no, they're not really better this turn. This at least keeps him on his heels, because it looks like his whole plan is to go wide and my whole plan is to go wide. Interesting attack. I don't want to lose my Engineer, I don't want to lose any of my creatures, so I'll take the hit. Maybe this means he has Irregulars, which would be great. No? Okay. Let's just keep swarming. Now, he can block there, and he takes 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, we go for it. Mm -hmm. 
Good luck. You're gonna need it. <sighs> And he's at zero. He'll never see that top card. So, boom. Two uh, quick and happy wins for Rakdostopter shenaniganry. And let's uh, see if we can get one more, and then maybe I'll try another Ridiculous Brew. I'm also waiting for the wife to come home, and she's bringing home Thai Cafe, and she's been away on over overnight to do some uh, girl, girl time with her friends. And it's probably not the girl time you're thinking of, because it's roller derby stuff. So it's probably more about uh, putting on skates and hitting each other brutally. But... When she gets home, she's bringing in Thai Cafe, which is like the best oriental food available where I live. Picking it up and bringing it home. And she'll have a lot to talk about, because she needs to tell me for probably at least half an hour to an hour all about every second of every minute that she was away, which is both, which is something I'm just used to. I mean, a lot of people have this, but she's a unique one. I, I don't I haven't met many women that actually recap every word and everything that was said and everything that was done since the moment we stopped laying eyes on each other. And she still does this uh ten and a half years later, so it's it's for reals. Um Man, two land hands are so bad. But we've got a lot of action to stay in the game. Uh, I'm going to keep it. No, I guess I'm not, because I mulliganed by accident. Oh, God. <laughs> that was awesome. I hit the wrong button after all that talking. Does anybody else hit the wrong button when mulliganing, or is that just me? I do it all the time when I'm like, sure, I'm going to keep it. I should just let the timer go to zero if I'm so worried about hitting the wrong button. And what have I played? Like a few hundred games of duels, and I still have this problem. I'm just going to get that into play. I don't like running out mirror when I have bone splinters in hand, um, because I'm probably going to use it as a defensive measure, and if he just does something like shock my mirror without playing a creature, then I'm stuck with two bone splinters. But here we go. Oh boy. Yeah, we're about to get rocked. <laughs> ah, well, there's something. Right on curve, too. I guess we could still draw like a boss. This will at least keep Jotty in check for a minute. Gonna need uh, some buddies. Gonna need some buddies. And a Rex Age, so that's a that's a good kick in the nuts. I guess now at least I have two things to blow up here, so let's just get that play out of the way. And let's hope he's slow from here on, although a um acid moss will be very regrettable. But we are way behind. He only has four cards. He mulliganed a few at least twice. But we'll see. Okay, nothing. At least Servitor gives us a clock. Come on, draw me something good. Yeah. That's good. I kind of wonder if I want to play it right now, because it's tempting to play Servitor and try to draw out another Reclamation Sage, but if he has that, I'm just... I mean, either way is so bad. And either one attacks for two, but this one's more mana efficient this turn. And if he plays like an Outland Colossus, I'm going to want to be able to do this next turn. So I guess we just run it out there. The way he fired off that Sage, though, makes me think he has two, but we'll see. It also looks like he had nothing else to do with his turn. Gideon's Reproach, Celestial Flare, what's it going to be? Awesome. 
I guess it has to be the engineer, even though I think the I think it's the better card most of the time. I think I gotta keep the chief. Just have to do damage. Now if I expected a Rex Sage, I could have sacked the chief, but now I don't. There's only four cards in that hand now. Fertile Thicket. Will it hit? Always hits, right? Always hits for my opponents. No matter how many non-basics they play. Hmm? Well, if he hit, he didn't keep it. Let's go get another Celestial Flare, shall we? Not this time, not this time. Our clock is still really slow, and his land count is getting where it needs to go. So we are in trouble. Although probably one of the best things that could happen to us I just kicked my mic cord with my foot and unplugged it. That was about as smooth as they come. And more removal. So this deck is green-white kill everything? I mean, my goodness. Normally I'd want to wait on Smothering Abomination, but I don't think I can. I think I just have to hope that there are more good creature cards in my top three Is he passing all right let's see what happens it's the good old double draw that's not a creature that's a creature that's a creature. That's a good one. That's right where I need it to be. Please have nothing. Please have nothing. Please have nothing. Please have nothing. All right. We're we're doing it. Get we're we're pulling out this really weird, awkward, bad five-card hand. Let's go. See what our opponent can do. Weird. What a weird card to have in this deck. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, if we had double red, we'd be golden. Oh well. He has a pump spell, we'll just make him play it pre-combat so I don't attack. Yep. Now I just need to untap. No Nissa's Revelations. No Nissa's Revelations, please. Or Renewals, I always screw that up. No Revelations either, neither one. Uh, hello. Uh, looks like I've got a fan who's been watching my uploads but hasn't seen me stream. Welcome. We're dorking it up with a uh, black and red Thopters deck. Thopters meet Husk. Husk meet Thopters. You two will be best friends. And, oh yeah, Firecraft, of course. The real, the real star. Yep, pause that timer. Read that card. Fog will not save you. 
Although you can try. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. All right, so that was fun. <laughs> Trying to play some kind of different uh, funsies decks instead of the same old spike decks because I got some feedback that I was being a bit too spiky, which I don't know what that is. But in the interest of um, being amusing, because I like you guys, we're going to try some other decks for a change. So let's see. What... To what have I done lately that might be fun? I'm just gonna go through my list here. The next one in line isn't like original, but it's one that's been in the background for a long time, so let's pull it out. Everybody remembers green white ramp that just gains a bunch of life and makes a bunch of tokens. <laughs> it's like green white ramp landfall. And, uh, let's see, I've actually had a lot of trouble with just getting the deck to behave and do well. It seems to stall out in all the wrong places, but what I'm trying now is, like, no removal. Just ignore the opponent entirely. Just gain life. And just, you know, create a ridiculous board state. It's fun. I already have the, like the list over here, so I'm just I'm just rattling it off. I'm not even like I don't build this fast from complete mentalness. I build pretty fast with in mental magic, but I do have a list I'm just copying. I'm not going to talk too much about what cards and why because I'm always testing cards. But this is just you know in case you're curious, it's where I'm at right this particular minute. I had another revenge in there, but I don't think that's right. I think two shepherds is right. All the right cards in all the right places. Oh yeah, you're going down. I know, don't sing. I've heard it before, especially when I'm sick. Voice of an angel, I have not. Mm. I don't even play Sun Petal Groves because I want my lands to be searchable and I don't have mana issues, in case you're wondering about that. Same thing uh, with not playing Foundry of the Consoles, even though I'll obviously have plenty of mana and not many mana requirements. I want to be able to hit off Nissa's Renewals, Evolving Wilds, Acid Moth, and Pilgrimage as much as possible, and Nissa. Because it's actually pretty common to run out of uh, ways to fetch. <laughs> uh, not ways to fetch, lands to fetch. It is common to run out of lands to fetch. And still have ways of fetching. Uh, do I think it is possible to make a control Grixis style deck for duels with the current card pile? <laughs> uh... Is it possible to make one? Yeah, you can make one. You can definitely make one. Um, will it do good? <laughs> you didn't ask me that, so I won't. I won't presume to answer questions. <laughs> but I can show you how I'd make one. Uh, I'll I'll work on one in the near future. What? I put in a name. I know I did. Name can't be blank. What's well, wrong with my name? I I entered it twice and it's telling me that my name's blank. That's not okay. Okay. Just get out of here before anything else goes wrong. <laughs> Let's see, if I were making Grixis, what would I do? I have a Grixis uh, Nantuko Husk deck that's, in my opinion, a totally nerdy and cool. 
But Grixis control, Grixis control. Huh. Such a bind. There's not much to take advantage of the artifact theme. Not really. Spy Network's one of the better control cards. Epiphany is the best at artificial card draw. But Grixis doesn't really give you anything cool for that. In fact, it gives you the opposite. It gives you sweepers. <coughs> hmm. How the heck could it beat ramp? Because you can you can do lots of sweeping, and you won't lose to aggro. So you probably do great against aggro, as long as you can get your land right. Which of course we don't have any useful fix like gate creeper. I don't want to run pilgrim's eye, but who knows? Uh, but how do you do against ramp? How do you do against any kind of big mana strategy? I just I don't like it. I'm gonna try to do better. It's like the same hand. <laughs> Thank you, stainless. You'd think I was mono green. It's two hands in a row, just like this. And no life gainer. Like, you really want a Kazandu or an offshoot because if the opponent does just about anything aggressive, you'll die. So, in order to stop, like, uh, decks. In order to stop big mana strategies, ramp decks, you're going to need Ingrixis. Like, the only answer is counter spells, right? I mean, unless you're going to do, like, Active Treason. I don't know. His hand is so bad. I mean, did you, like, uh, so slow. But it looks like it might pay off here because our opponent might be red-green ramp. So... This is the kind of hand that is really good against Red Green Ramp, because we don't have any dead cards. And I don't know what Hit's hand is like, but it's going to get interesting. Natural Connection is for wimps. It's <laughs> That's a lie. Natural Connection's fine. Maybe it should be some kind of a split with Natural Connection. I just, I for some reason, I have that reaction. I want my double and triple uh, land hits with Pilgrimage. I want all the land. I don't just want one. And I don't care if it's at instant speed. I just want a bunch of them. No, not Moss on my green. <laughs> Let's see if he uh, runs a third color. Oh, he went for a forest. I'm going to make him pay. He's going to pay for that. And he's going to sweat it, too. Because I don't care. I make you suffer. You didn't prepare for my acid moss. Now you have no red. And I'm going to shamelessly go and get my white mana because I don't think I have a choice. Yeah, tap land. Oh, here we are in our moss wars. No, not my white mana, please. Oh my gosh, he went for my force. <laughs> He's the he's the worst at all of all time at acid mossing things. Maybe he doesn't have the cinder glades. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe he's unlocking cinder glades. How's his rank? One. So he just got into duels and it was immediately like this acid moss is the way to be. Acid moss is the way to be. I wonder if anybody else knows how good it is. That's probably what he's thinking. I wonder if anybody else is gonna acid moss. <laughs> yes, sir, I am here. To tell you, I was acid mossing while you were still dancing with the AI. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take that. <laughs> you double moss, I double moss. And now you have no red. Oh no, he's gonna get back moss. <laughs> well, if he does, he can't get red mana, so that's kind of fine. And I think I'm just fine with that. I think instead. I'm going to just start ramping out cool stuff. So he gets a mountain. Yeah, I figured that might be what he does. And what are we going to do? I want Let's get retreat online. That's perfect. Okay. So, let's start making let's start making magic over here. 
I've got the magic in me. When I draw my card, it's always what I want to see. Everybody gets annoyed cause I top deck so luckily. Cause I got the magic, 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 magic. <sighs> Does anybody watch, um, I think it's called Walking the Plains. It's like a comedy series. Uh, Magic the Gathering's official channel puts it out. They had that one w uh, with like the Karate Kid montage with the song. He's like, you're the best at magic. Tapping those cards and casting spells. It was really fun. Anyway, I probably sound ridiculous right now. I just need to knock this out. <laughs> I need to cut it out. How many of you are watching this right now? Nine of you? Well... Yeah, can we just forget this ever happened and move on with my uh, kind of obsessive life? <laughs> all right, so he wants to do all the things, and I'm just going to make a whole bunch of stuff. And we're just going to get board state ridiculous. How sick is this? Well, hopefully you guys don't mind my silliness. I'm sure it's annoying to some people, but this is how I used to actually play. Um, I was really annoying when I was a kid. Like, when I was playing at, like, 14 or 15, I would sit down at the table across from my opponent, and I would just sing the, like, most catchy, annoying song I could think of just to try to throw them off and be a jerk about it. I really regret it. I would never do it again because I would hate those people now that I'm older, but, you know. One does what one does at that age, which is, you know, think the world is all about them. And uh, I think there was a tournament, I was playing for a whole box of Mirage, and it was a Type 1 tournament, and I was playing a uh, blue-white prison with Moat and uh, Mana Drain and, of course, all the Moxes and Winter Orbs. Uh, the point being, it was a really annoying deck for anyone to have to deal with. But while I played it, I was uh, singing... It's raining on prom night from Greece at the t like under my breath the whole time and it got under everyone's nerves and I like I really did sing that song under my breath while people were trying to think for uh, a 10 round tournament which I won uh, but I really probably didn't need to not many people had uh, the cards that I had for that event is it time to blow up his world he's only got one card left so it might be time to blow up his world I can fetch, fetch, blow up the world, jotty, land, and be right back to work. Yeah. Let's let's mess with him. The most memorable deck I ever played. Question from the Twitch chat. What is the most memorable deck I ever played? Oh, man. Ah... Uh. It was probably blue and white, because most of my decks were. And it's funny, I'm racking my memory because there were so many different versions of blue and white that I played. I mean, it's a very different question, right? It's not, what's the best deck did you play? It's, what's the most memorable? So I guess it'll always be my go-to blue-white do-nothing deck, you know? Just <laughs> moat. <laughs> Moat was my favorite. Um, it it had a lot of it. It evolved over time. It had winter orbs for a long time, uh, and Armageddon uh, to go with those moxes. It it just changed so much over time. There were four strip mines and four icy manipulators for a while. Uh, there was millstone. There was jester's cap. Like there was force of will, and there wasn't. You know, things just kind of always changed but it was always the same idea play blue white drive the opponent insane just take away all the things they could do and play the most degenerate pain in the neck magic available <laughs> and that's kind of what this deck does when you really look at it this is um kind of a prison it just kind of locks everything up with these enchantments and it builds value and takes the opponent's toys away although it doesn't 
you know, it's not that bad. It only has the two board wipes for removal at all. So actually, it's pretty different. Do I want to? Yeah, I do. I want to keep fetching. I want to get to Amiria Shepherd and or Uli Mog. There aren't that many creatures in here. So it shouldn't take long to find them is my point. And let's see, another moss. I think he only has one red, so I think I want to hit that. Um, one, two, three, so I, I've really got to plan this turn out. So let's think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that leaves me a spare mana, and it still keeps me setting up for Super Sower. And I've still got Warden up my sleeve, so. Now, what's the sequencing? Um, Jotty first. Gain that life. Moss second. Hit that mountain. This is, this is how you play Moss, my friend. You hit the land that they really, 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 really don't want you to be hitting. That's how you Moss. Majoring Bully says he's probably not, you know, any kind of true ramp. He's making the starter deck work for him. <laughs> is that not enough Mosses for you, Nighthawk? Because I have a Guardian right here. We can We can go another level on Moss. I'm not afraid. And we've built a super wide board super fast. And of course we're going to plus Nissa because that's the only way to do it. And yep, you're out. You get to resign. Dirtle, dirtle, dirtle. Dirtle, dirtle, dirtle. And... I mean, I guess I can just keep mana up for Evo triggers. Brah! Although, what's he going to do? He's not going to kill any of my stuff. Like, really. There's, like, nothing he can do to kill my stuff. But uh, the Evo trigger can keep me digging. So I can get closer to Emiria Shepherd and Ulamog, which is probably game over, so we'll just keep the mana up for triggers. I bet those red cards feel really bad right now. Um, I think we'll get rid of the Jotties. We have enough life. He's got no board. Our other things can attack. There's Emiria. I bet this will be Ulamog, the two creatures we want to find. Yep, ba ba, just like that. I've got the magic, magic, magic. Can we kill him? Uh, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. I think so. So that's going to be a little bit unclimactic, but whatever. Anticlimactical. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Sure. Let's go trigger happy, shall we, everyone? I've got a question about my streaming, which I'm going to answer as soon as I get done uh, with this little battle. Oh, wait. Wife just got home, so I'm actually just about done in general. Because as you guys know, I have been waiting for her to get home and tell me all about her weekend. So I'm going to finish this one off. I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to end this stream here, and I'm going to see you guys probably tomorrow or something. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Double hit. Love it. Looks like they were tap lands. Maybe two Gruel Gil Gates. Gruel Gil Gates. Getting strong now. Winning game now. Fog, 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 fog. Are you ready? Fog? Nope. All right. So uh, the question is How long have you been streaming this evening? And is it the same time most nights? From the UK here, so trying to work on what time to be here. Okay. Um, I've been streaming, I don't think even an hour, but my wife's home, so I got to go. So unfortunately, we're going to leave it there. Uh, so I haven't been streaming that long today. 
And uh, when do I usually stream? It, it depends. I, I wish I could give you a schedule. I kind of have a really open schedule. I guess most of the time I stream between uh, 3 and five, three and 6, 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. on weekdays. So that's a really weird time slot, I know, and it's hard to make it. And that's Eastern Standard Time, by the way, EST. Uh, 3 to 6 p.m. on weekdays, but there's no guarantees I'm I'm as likely to be on at 2 in the morning as I am uh, this time on Sundays. I wish I could give you better guidance. I can't. My life is weird. And uh, thank you guys for coming by, and uh, that was fun. And I'll be back with kind of more interesting oddball decks in the future.